everyone, welcome to this video today. Today I'm sitting here at the Cafe KOB, a coffee shop restaurant in Costa Millie with my friend Ash Pemberton. Hello he's, everyone. He's visiting from Chiang Mai for what, uh, two weeks? That's a week it. and a half? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe some of you know that Chiang Mai has a bit of an issue this time of year with pollution. So um, I'm actually married and I've got a couple of kids. As soon as they get onto their school breaks, so many of us just try to, to get out of Chiang Mai. Yeah, and it's really bad this time of year during burning season. Yeah, the pollution has been an issue for maybe four or five years for us. And yeah, this year it's pretty bad too. But honestly, we're just so sick of it and so fed up with battling against it. And you know, we had all of our COVID masks and now we've got pollution masks the chance to escape. Yeah, it just, so you know, it's it, why you're in Samui. That's yeah. probably part of the reason, right? It is. Um, I know this is common for people that live in Chiang Mai. They come down to the islands yeah. during burning season. Absolutely. And for me, Samui is my first choice. Mm. I mean, there are many different places in Thailand, and I love so many of them. Ko Chang is a big favorite of mine. Uh, I quite like Phuket, but to be honest, number one is Ko Samui. Number yeah. one. and. Also, it's important to point out that Phuket is, if you think about it, is technically not an island because it's connected by a bridge to the mainland. Sure. Samui yeah. is a real island. You have to either fly to get in here or take a ferry boat. Yeah, Phuket doesn't even feel like an island. Phuket feels like a city, whereas mm -hmm. Koh Samui... It's like um, Bangkok on an yeah. island. I used, to, I used to actually live in, in Koh Samui about nine years ago and flying back now into Koh Samui and seeing it not that much has changed. I've seen, I've seen some development, mm -hmm. but not really that much. Samui is still Samui. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's. Uh, I know that music you, to my ears. You love it here, don't you? I love it here. I've been here two, going on two years now. Yeah. Uh, living in Lamai with my girlfriend. Yeah. And I just love the the laid back lifestyle. Sure. More carefree. Of course, now there's a lot of marijuana shops popping up everywhere. Well, that is that's another, everywhere. That's another conversation, and, and maybe we save that for another time. Stumble across that because I would say that is the biggest change that I've seen on the mm -hmm, island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it used now, to be full of bars, cafes, massage shops, and now there's a new one, and it's dispensaries. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say every 50 minutes. And they're sprouting up like weeds, <laughs> literally. Do you like? Cannabis? No. Do you use cannabis? No. Okay. So uh, Occasionally I will, but I don't like the way it makes me feel. Right. Because I get paranoid. Sure. Self-conscious. I just don't like it. Right? right. So there's a lot of temptations, right? There's there's more marijuana shops than 7-Elevens now. There are. Samui. There are. Yeah. But and, it's not uh, something I enjoy. Yeah. If you are a weed smoker or a cannabis user, because there's edibles and uh, there's such an amazing selection. Anything you want. I mean, I don't know if Thailand needed another reason to pull people in and, you know, you want to come here and, and have a very relaxed, very chilled out, kind of like less restrictions, mm -hmm. less hassles, less uh, red tape, less law. Less like, everything. Yeah. Well, now there's yet less another bureaucracy. reason. <laughs> yet another reason uh -huh. is that you can just go in and buy weed and smoke weed freely in Thailand now. So, yeah, an another reason probably that I won't be leaving. And that was one of the, the draws for the, the TAT, the Thailand, or whoever was in charge of implementing this. I think it was the Ministry of Health, right. I believe. Okay. And he, he's the one that implemented the legal cannabis laws, right? Yeah. To um, incentivize tourism. I'm not sure. But I don't think they needed it. I don't, I, I'm not sure that's the reason. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to give you my opinion. These are not the opinions of, tourism, of, of, uh, of anything other than my opinion, but <laughs> I think that Thailand isn't doing that for tourism. I think they're doing it because Thailand wants to be the weed supplier to the world. <laughs> and we get 12 hours a day of blissful sunshine here which is just the perfect conditions for growing cannabis outdoors sure yeah so it's very cost effective the ties are very good growers they've got the right climate and now they've dropped the legislation so yeah it's massive just an echo of one of many reasons to come to Thailand. Sure. So, so we, many to list. We're going to do a bit of a sales <laughs> job on you guys. Okay. And between us, I think we could probably list 20 reasons mm -hmm. why 
living in Thailand is like just so good. But particularly both of us, like, I'm on holiday, but this is Mike's, this is now Mike's home. On this. Why living in Samui in particular is just, is just such a delight. I can think of so many reasons, but just to name a few off the top of my head, uh, like you said, alluded to already, yeah. uh, just you know, beautiful sunny weather, I would say every day, every nine day. months out of the year, there's rainy season from October to January, Yes, but that's, that's pretty much it, and, and also no tsunamis or natural disasters really to speak of. Where's here. the wood? Touch wood there. Yeah. Because so, it's in a protected bay, unlike Phuket, right. where they get hit by tsunamis sometimes. Yeah. I remember uh, maybe seven years ago, we had a, a storm that lasted about 20 days, where every single day oh. was, was wet, was gray, and there was uh, mudslides coming down from the mountain. Oh no, that was in Samui. That was in Samui, I, and I remember that, but even that wasn't that bad. Like, sure. The thing about Thailand in particular is, straight after that storm, the sun comes out and within i'm going to say like minutes the place just dries up uh-huh so the water it, evaporates yeah it's you know it That's after it. the after the rain comes the sunshine and then it, it just kind of all seems back to normal again yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's, it's so good for me to be back here um we've spent a bit of time on the beach again because um, that's like the one drawback of living in Chiang Mai. That no beaches. No landlocked. No easy access to no. beautiful beaches. But you're always a plane ride away. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now they have direct flights. During COVID, those direct flights were cancelled. Right? Yeah. But now they're back on again. Have been for many months. Flight, flights, internal flights in Thailand and flights out of Chiang Mai are usually very good value. I don't know if you've noticed, but since COVID, prices have gone up a bit. Yeah, well, that stands to reason, right? It's yeah. more tourists are flocking. Absolutely. Yeah. And then more recently, uh, <laughs> booking direct flights from Chiang Mai to, to Koh Samui, actually our flight home is very expensive. Uh, because, so just because it's... You know, it, it works on the system that the more people on the flights, the higher the higher the cost. And Bangkok Airways has a monopoly on the island, so it's right. the only the only airline in and out of of Samui. Sure. So they can charge pretty much whatever they want. You know. Yeah, and it feels like they do. Mm -hmm. So when you come to Samui, do you ever come by ferry? Uh, yes, I have been many times by either Sitran or sometimes yeah. Raja. Yeah. Um, but Raja has sank a couple of times. So. Are you serious? Yeah. A couple of years, like a year and a half ago, one sank to the bottom of the ocean oh. and they actually found some bodies on another island not too far from here because it was in, during a storm. Yeah. And there were a bunch of garbage trucks on the boat oh, and it just flipped over, wow. apparently. So but maybe you want to go by plane, people. Plane is the better option. Uh, but Sea Chan, very, very safe. And then there's also Lampraya, too, yeah. which is a little bit more expensive, but it's faster. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. The beauty of um, coming to Samui by air is that you come straight into Bangrak. And, and it's a beautiful flight. It is. Flying yeah, over the island. For sure. And then, you know, Bangrak is where we are now. We're on the beach in Bangrak, and the airport is literally what, two, three minutes away. Very well, a little bit. Before, I'd say twenty minutes from here, ten minutes. Yeah. Very close. Yeah. And uh, did you know that Samui's airport was voted one of the world's top ten airports? I've heard this. Yeah. It's ranked as one of the most beautiful airports in the world. It is. I think it's a good reason. And the security. This is what always makes me laugh. You know, there's so much security when we come in and out of, uh, of airports. In Samui, there's like this two foot picket fence <laughs> that you can just step over. That's, yeah, that's yeah, their yeah. security barrier. So it's uh, it's always like a really happy landing for me. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's fresh like, air. You get the fresh air. Yeah, absolutely. Not too many restrictions. That was one of the really good things about Smooey during COVID too. Is there were a lot less restrictions. On it. You don't have to wear a mask everywhere. Really? Just if you go in like Seven Eleven or sure. Central Festival or something. Yeah, yeah. But for the most part, it's very relaxed. Mm -hmm. Sabai, sabai. Yeah. I mean, I'm so glad now that we no longer have to talk about COVID and the restrictions. Yeah, we should yeah, just I'm, not even talk about it. I'm anymore. seriously glad that that's all over. Cause what a pain in the ass that was. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, let, let's just go back to that yeah. list because I know that your audience mm -hmm. would either be looking for or interested in life in Samui or... Definitely. Uh, and post a comment if you're planning a trip to Samui. Love yeah. to hear from you guys. Like escaping the nine to five mm -hmm. and being a digital nomad 
uh, working remotely, living the island life, which it is like I follow you on yeah. uh, on LinkedIn and on Facebook. So yeah. I see a lot of that content from you. I also make a lot of people jealous. Yeah, you do. Uh, you have course. to be careful with that. You have to. Yeah, I like it though. When, when I first moved to Samui, which was about. 12 years ago, mm -hmm. I used to uh, be a graphic designer and I'd be web chats with my uh, clients. Yeah. And in the end, I stopped putting the beautiful views in the background because they really, you know, they, at first they're like, oh, that's so nice. But then actually they just didn't like it. They're like, oh. I'm in rainy England oh. on, a gray, on a gray winter's day and you've got this You're tropical just rubbing it in their faces. So <laughs> I would angle the camera and just put a white wall behind me <laughs> just because it just made the meetings flow a bit better without yeah. that, without or that green assembly. screen i don't know if they had green screens back then probably. actually no probably not no right? no back then it was skype you couldn't use these fancy backdrops or anything no yeah but i was but just yeah. going to say let, let's list off the reasons uh -huh. why why your people your audience would want to come and live here in thailand and for me it's just this overwhelming amazing sense of freedom absolutely that's why right. that would that, that would be my number one so yeah. although although it's a little bit risky you'll see a lot of the locals drive motorbikes <laughs> in flip-flops and shorts and wearing a mask yeah. and no helmet oh i went no helmet and a mask that sounds like ties mm -hmm. so the the foreigners that live here would be exactly the same but without the mask yeah yeah they, so i almost always wear my helmet Better safe than sorry. I always wear my helmet as well, but that on Samui, that's how you can tell yeah. a tourist from a local. I always think because the locals they don't wear shirts. When I say locals, I mean foreigners. They're all tatted up, yeah. tattoos all over their body a lot of times. Yeah. and never, never with a helmet. So when when I'm driving around on my motorbike, because I've hired a motorbike for my stay here, uh -huh. I always put my helmet on. And that's how you can tell I'm a tourist. Yeah, and, Probably, when, yeah, and right. when I was a local, I think I did used to drive without a helmet. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to communicate, not that it's particularly clever to drive a motorbike without a helmet, I'm just saying it's the sense of freedom. More that you freedom. Get. Yeah. Nobody's going to stop you and tell you, oh, you need to put your helmet on. Yeah. yeah. Or occasionally the police blocks. The cops, they have little random, you know, checkpoints sometimes around the island. Yeah. But you don't really have to worry about having to run in with a cop. And even if you do, if he pulls you over for not wearing a helmet, you pay him 500 baht, yeah, and you're spot. good to go. Yeah. You don't have to go to the police station or anything. Absolutely. So I, I remember that one of the first times uh, that I really felt this amazing sense of freedom. It was being on my motorbike with just flip flops and board shorts and driving to just like a little uh, a little stream that comes down from the mountain, uh -huh. swimming in the cold water, jumping back on my bike, like no towel, no t-shirt, just driving off. And you know, it's warm enough and the climate's nice enough to be able to just dry yourself off as you're yeah, driving exactly. your motorbike. Yeah. So that's kind of like what There's I mean. There's Namuang by... waterfall. Have you been there since you've been back? No. Oh, it's um, Namuang is past Luman. Okay. So that's one of the best waterfalls, I would say. Nice. It might be worth to visit before you leave. Sure. Yeah, sounds good. On on this trip, actually, because my kids are a little bit older, and this <laughs> this has really been like a family trip. Yeah. I haven't really been discovering. We haven't really been uh, like exploring the island so much. We kind of already done that before. Sure, just relax. Relaxing. Actually, the idea was that we were going to have a healthy holiday. Mm -hmm. So we. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're on track, we're doing okay. So uh -huh. the idea was that we were going to do Muay Thai. you're drinking a fruit smoothie, yeah. so that's healthy. You're on the coffee, I'm on the smoothie the today. But yeah, the idea was we were going to sign up hmm. because there's so much yoga here, there's Muay Thai, yeah. there's quite a lot of gyms. Lots, especially but, in the mine. Really, more mm -hmm. in the mine. Lots of Muay Thai gyms. What, what we found is an amazing little, uh, do you know the sport paddle? Yeah, it's right over here in Flylock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love I've that. Never tried it. Ah, it's amazing. So they built they built these they built four amazingly brand new courts kind of set in tropical paradise. There's a tennis court, two paddle courts, and a pickleball court. So I, I just heard about pickleball ball recently. I didn't I've, know what it was. I've become before. a pickleball evangelist. <laughs> I absolutely love the game. So I, I it's used like to tennis, right? It's kind of okay. Same, same I wasn't going to use this expression, but I'm going to now. It's tennis for old people. 
Oh, okay. So it's a bit like table tennis, and it's a bit like normal tennis, but the court is small, and you don't have to do much running. Okay, yeah. So it's yeah. like still fun, and I you can the pure. yeah fire shots at each other. It's quite a quick fire game, very sociable. All about playing other people yeah. and just being able to turn up at a court and just get a game with some strangers. Um, so I've been going there. We've been playing every morning. Amazing. Yeah. And getting uh, like great exercise, good for cardio, man. Like getting the blood flowing, right? Yeah, and mainly because of the heat, right? Mm. It's the amount that you sweat when you play, even at even at seven or eight a.m. Or again at the in the evening, sort of like past five. Uh -huh. It's a wonderful time to play, but in the midday sun, it, uh, you can't play. The courts are always empty. It's just it's just too hot to play. Do you know? Uh, it's not really related, really. But do you know Ivo by any chance? He lives in Phuket. He's a Dutch guy. No. Well, he just came over to Samui. He was here for two weeks, just to take a vacation from Phuket. And he was staying somewhere around here, and he'd go to that paddle court yeah. every day. Okay. So he does that in Phuket, and yeah. then he found one here. Yeah. It's so, awesome. It's really awesome. They're also building one in Lamai, too, which will be finished. I think it's the same people. Soonish. The same people are expanding into Lamai. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. So, that'll be good. I don't know if there's any pickleball fans out there. Do you think there are any of your uh, community? Any, probably not. I can't no, really read the not comments many. very well. So, for people that are into pickleball, there's a really big scene in Chiang Mai playing pickleball. Mm. But I've got to tell you, in Samui, it's the nicest, most beautiful scenic court I've ever played on. The paddle court. Yeah. i got to try it sometime. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So, the difference being, and maybe this is like leading us on, the difference being, if you play in Chiang Mai, you could play in a community game for about 40 baht. Mm. And people will lend you the ball, lend you the paddle. A dollar 20, yeah. USD. So you're, you're paying, you could pay between, let's say 40 and 60 baht to play an hour's worth of pickleball. However, in Samui, so for me, my wife and my two children, renting balls, paddles, and the court for an hour and a half, mm -hmm. guess how much? Less? Guess. 30 baht. Or more, it's gotta be Wait, more. 1200, okay. so 1200. Ouch! So, what's that, $30? No, more. Still not too expensive, but it's a lot more than 40 baht. It is, and I'm gonna say that's like the big difference that I find mm -hmm. with being in Chiang Mai and yeah. being in Samu. Yeah, and the food is a lot cheaper there, too. That's Way cheaper. You so, can find good deals here, too, but it is more touristy. But what what do you what what do you think to the Samui kind of like cafes and bars and restaurants? What 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 standard do you think they are? What do you mean? Well, this I mean we're we're, so we're sitting in this one this now. This place is great. I mean, this is one. Of, this is an institution in Samui. Okay. So they've got five of these cafe KOBs right around the island. Sure. Um, I think I've been to two. This yeah, this one's really nice, right? And you've got a view of Bangkok Beach right over here. Yeah. But. Overall, like compared to Chiang Mai, I don't know. I actually haven't been back to Chiang Mai for at least a year now. Okay. I'd like to make another trip up there soon sure. after burning season. Yeah, well, that's, Mary wants to go, so yeah, that's going to be soon. I mean, my my conclusion, the reason why I was asking you is, I've just noticed that Samui has a tremendous amount of really quite desirable cafes. Oh yeah, it's oh yeah. Eggs Benedict and flat whites, uh -huh. like that culture of like a really nice brunch in a really nice setting. Uh, and I you just, can go I just to like a luxury hotel or resort and get bottles, you know. Sure. Do, do you do that? that I'm no. Gonna, I'm going to say that's my best tip in Samui. Mm -hmm. So go to a five-star resort or go to a five-star hotel and just say, can we use your facilities? <laughs> and normally they will say, as long as you have a minimum spend of, mm -hmm. I don't know, 250, 500, whatever it is. There's one right down here, it's called Timbo Beach Club. I like that one. Have you been there? I haven't been, but I've driven by it and I met, actually at the at the paddle ball court, I met the owner's son. Susan. Oh, okay. the other guy. Yeah, because he's playing uh, pickleball and paddle. His name's David. Okay. But yeah, Susan's the owner and she started that place you know, like a year and a half ago. Right. And it's incredible. So there you can go, you can get like a bottle of wine for 800 baht roughly, yeah. sit and enjoy the view. Sure. Copangan. Yeah. Amazing place. But that's not something I do often because I only spend about a thousand dollars a month, believe right. it or not. Sure. Convert that to baht spend. for me? That's, that's about 30,000 baht. Okay. Just over 30,000 baht. Okay. But keep in mind, 
we're not go big spenders, we're not going out partying all the time. Yeah. Getting and, and bottle how, service. How do you find that thousand bucks a month goes into Moon? Uh, well, we're lucky. The place that we found was during COVID, right? So we got a discounted rate. Okay. That's what's, about your, what's your rent? If you don't nine, I talked about this in my interview on Retired Working for You, which you may have seen. Yeah, I should uh, say, yeah, shouldn't I? Yes, yeah, I've that's definitely it. seen that one. Okay, great, great. Uh, so that that's 9000 bottom a month for rent. Oh, that's, that's a really good price. Now what, they're going to raise it a little bit, but it's not going to be significant. One or two bed? One bedroom. One bedroom. Square one bath. Meter? Yeah, and living How room. How many? Do you know? 35 right. square meters, quite small. In the mine. But beautiful view. Like ten minutes from the beach. Yeah. Um, our neighbors are all Russian, so we don't really speak to them that much. Okay. So we speak English. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's amazing, right? Sure. So you don't have. Have, have to you be... noticed that, that, that there's been more Russians in Saloon? Oh yeah. And Ukrainians living Ukrainians. living next to each other. Yeah. In peace, sometimes away from their walls. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So they live, um, they cohabitate together a lot of times. They get along with one another sure. for the most part. Yeah. And, yeah just so obviously that, that, that accent country. is quite, uh, quite distinctive. You know, Russian accent, mm -hmm. probably you can tell. But I wouldn't be able to tell if someone was Ukrainian or Russian. It's hard to tell sometimes. And I never ask. Like, yeah, you don't, I, I don't really... It doesn't really matter, It doesn't right? affect me, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't affect me, but yeah. So people, where were we going? What, where, were we, where were we on next? Going down the list of reasons oh, to choose. Let's stick to the program. Yeah, more more cost reasons. of living. Cost of living is definitely there. Always important. The 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 freedom, the weather. Got any more for me? Quality of life. Yeah, kind of goes hand in hand with cost of living. I would say. Yeah. Okay, here's a big one. Opportunity. Mm -hmm. Do you think you have more opportunity to earn living in Thailand Ooh, or living in question. living in America? I would probably say America. Would you? Yeah, I uh, don't feel the same. Mm -hmm. So I've started a graphic design agency, but I came as a, a graphic designer and I was working as a digital nomad, living in Samui, just me yeah. doing my job, but working for a UK company. Okay. Now, working where, remotely before it was working, trendy, trendy thing Sure, I, I think I was one of the, not <laughs> not the first, but I was definitely one of the, like, the first to, to move and live in Thailand. And mm -hmm. at the time, I didn't even know it was called being a digital nomad. It they was just, didn't even have a label for it. No, it was just me on my laptop. Yeah. And rather than living in, in London, working from a freezing cold kitchen, it was like, well, I could live in Thailand and yeah, be nice and warm. Yeah, good for you. Good for you. Yeah. So, so that was how... That was how long ago? 10? About, mm. probably about, it started about 12 years ago. Okay. But just to get back to that point about opportunity, uh -huh. what I decided I wanted to do is I wanted to grow my business. Yeah. I wanted to move from just being a freelance graphic designer mm -hmm. to being an agency and to take that step. For overnight design. For overnight design. And, and just very quickly, let me, let me just explain. Overnight design is a presentation design agency and we work for um, highly stressed, highly paid uh, management and marketing consultants who should not be doing their own presentation design. And Thailand is seven hours ahead of the UK, so we use the time zone to work while our clients sleep. So they send us their work as late as midnight, they wake up in the morning, and at 8 a.m. we've designed their presentation. So it gives them like this stress-free start to their day so that they can enjoy their evenings knowing that when they wake up, all of their work has been professionally designed, professionally branded and ready to go. So a lot of people complain about the time zone difference between Thailand and whatever their home country is, but you're actually taking advantage of it I do. for your benefit. Yeah, I try to capitalize on that. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna tell That's you, smart. I'm gonna tell you people, I did not plan this. This was just me genuinely wanting to live in Thailand and genuinely wanting to keep my job. And when I first moved over here, I said to my clients, oh, don't worry, I'll work UK hours. Okay. And then I didn't because I'm a morning person. Okay. So I wake up in the morning, I like to get my stuff done. And being in a time zone ahead made me, ooh, truthfully made me about five times more in demand mm -hmm. for my graphic design services because, really? because I'm working through the night. Really? So what I wanted to do was I wanted to grow that. Uh -huh. 
basically every time someone asked me to do design, I was I equate that to money. It's like so I never said no. It's like can you do this? Yeah. The answer is yes. If there's it's money like, involved, then it sign it, me up. Yeah, because that I'm would support right support now. my life here in mm -hmm. Thailand. So I always Absolutely. said yes. So it expanded, expanded, expanded. Yeah. And when I say expanded, it meant hiring Thai graphic designers. Training them and reskilling them a little bit to be presentation designers, uh -huh. um, and then being able to say yes to more work from the UK. Now, if I tried to do that in the UK, the cost of employing a UK graphic designer over a Thai graphic designer right astronomical. Well, in fact, way higher. Let, let, let's get specific. We, we can talk dollars. Yeah, that'd be interesting. A Thai graphic designer in Chiang Mai, if you pay them a thousand dollars a month, that is a really, really good wage. Oh yeah. Um, so that's well, equivalent. Thousand baht. Yeah. Just over. Yeah, I think thirty-two. 32. Sounds about right. So my Roughly. my senior graphic designers that have been with me. Uh, seven years in Chiang Mai, seven or eight years, they now earn as much as 40,000 wow. a month, which is a real Bangkok wage in Chiang Mai. Mm -hmm. But still, when I'm outsourcing the work from the UK, it's still incredibly competitive. And this oh, is, think so, right? this is what I mean by opportunity. Uh -huh. I wouldn't be able to set that business up in many other places. Maybe Too India, barriers, Philippines, you know, where, where there's low low skilled like overhead low skilled labor uh -huh. and by labor i mean the actual graphic designers where you can afford to hire an office to, yeah. to bring everyone together um and still make money and that's part of setting up a business in thailand right you need to hire three at least three thai Correct. employees shareholders yes give up majority share of the company the thai thai staff as far as I understand it. Correct. I still don't know exactly how at all, all the intricacies, but. Sure. Those, that's the basic. Those three staff quite often can just be on paper. Mm -hmm. So they could just be. They're not really doing anything no, inside the company. No, it's just, as long as you uh, pay their social formality. security. That's, that's, that's the actual cause. Okay. But maybe now is, um, is a good time to, to talk about how I've been able to do all of this quite mm -hmm. easily. And before we turned on the camera, I hinted, could be a good, good mentor for myself. And I hinted to Mike that he might well take this route next. Uh -huh. So when people say to me, oh, you have a Thai company, you own your own house in Thailand, you have your own car, uh -huh. how have you managed to do this? I'm getting a brand new motorbike very soon. It's something I'm working name? my way up to in Mary's name. Okay. She this can is... finance it, I can't. Here we go. This is, this is the crux. Uh -huh. That uh, if you want to start a business in Thailand, it has to be 51% Thai owned. Yeah. Uh, if you want to buy a condo in uh, in a block, a condo is uh, an apartment. Condominium. Yeah. Essentially an apartment. If you want to buy as a foreigner, buy a condo, then you can buy one in your name, but the overall shareholding of the building needs to be 51% Thai owned. Now, is that for condos too? Because I know you can get that freehold, so you actually own it outright. You can own, it, it wouldn't be a freehold on a condo, but it, you can own that condominium. Mm -hmm. you obviously, you don't own the land it's built on, but you own the condominium. There really isn't any land, it's just a box. Sure. But the overall building, the reason why a foreigner can own it, is the overall building must oh, be 51% okay, okay. Thai owned. That makes sense. Yeah. Ah. Um, but There's a new condominium development here called the Wing Simile. Okay. It's on the way to Chuang, and it's like 2 million baht for a decent sized condo. Sure. I think they're selling out really fast. So two million baht uh, sounds like a lot. But it's nothing <laughs> in you, you know, most places. It's about $60,000 $60, to own a condo 20 minutes from the beach. Awesome. So cheap. So the, the secret to my success mm -hmm. here and the secret to doing things quite easily um, without having to go through too much red tape, mm -hmm. too many formalities, setting up companies and having 51% Thai ownership. What I did, and this is again not me planning, it's just the way that my life's worked out. Uh -huh. is I got married uh, 15 years ago to a girl from Isan. Uh, I met her in Bangkok. I fell in love with her after about four days. I said to her, "There you go." If I had a girlfriend like you in England, 
you know, it would be like the best thing that ever happened to me. And she just looked at me and went, I'll come to England. <laughs> yeah. Well, so after knowing, so <laughs> after knowing Kim, my wife, for about two weeks, I tried to get her a visa to come to England. Mm -hmm. We were completely turned down. Um, this can be a difficult situation. One of the one of the the formalities <laughs> is that you've got to prove that you have a genuine relationship with that person to get a Thai girlfriend, boyfriend, partner into your country. Into the marriage certificate. So we were turned down flat. But the British Embassy were very clear with me and they wrote me a, a letter saying, if you can prove this, this and this, and, and the big one was, do you have a genuine relationship? Then yes, you can have a visa. Okay. Um, so it took us six months to get her a visa. Uh -huh. um, and when she came to England, after six months, it was uh, a fiance visa. So I actually, although I wasn't quite ready, we had to get married for mm. Kim to stay, Kim's my wife, for Kim to stay in the UK. Actually, we only ended up staying there a year and, and, then, long, and long then moved back to Thailand. Okay, so, so yeah, that, that's true. Here's the crux of it. I've been living in Thailand for 15 years, relatively simply. I've set up my business, we bought a house. Uh, my children were born in Bangkok and go to school here. And it's all been easy because I'm married to a Thai. Mm -hmm. That is... So you've I've been married been, 15 plus years? We've, we've been together 16, we've been married 15. Yeah, yeah. Congrats. Thank you, thank you. Now, it's not always been easy. Uh -huh. like, well, nothing is. Cross nothing we're doing is always easy. Yeah, cross-cultural marriage has its challenges. Mm -hmm. um, but all in all, I'm going to say it's probably like one of the best things I've ever done. Yeah. Because it's just That's made my life here easy. Something I've considered and I've talked about with my girlfriend as well. Is just, just to get it. You know, get yeah. It. And I think a lot, of, uh, a lot of foreigners that come to Thailand mm -hmm. will at least laugh or joke about that option or, or maybe even seriously explore it mm -hmm. about getting married. Did you have to do the dowry thing? Yeah. You know the dowry? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that's something that either the parents of the take care of or you have to do personally. Yeah. I, well, I had to do it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I remember at so the time it was a lot of money. That's one thing that's kind of a... Uh, making it difficult for me. Ah, to pay the dowry. Yeah. Sure. So, it's, I mean, my, my girlfriend's family, they live in a rural community north of Bangkok. Okay. It's called Lopeberry. Okay. Don't on a it. farm. Yeah. And just, you know, with the bare bones, uh, no real modern conveniences. I've actually stayed at her house for two weeks. Okay. I don't know how I made it through the entire two weeks, but uh, it was interesting for sure. Like you wake up in the morning, you just dump a bucket of cold water on your head, up and, and that's so, it's so, just so hot. My, my wife is from Isa, uh -huh. which um, in Thai is just the northeast province. And the shower facilities yeah. are a huge clay pot, <laughs> which collects the rainwater from the roof. Uh -huh. And you've probably seen them everywhere, style. like a, a plastic bowl, and you scoop out the cold yeah. water and throw it The same it over that they use for the toilets when you. Yeah. Kind of like How that. do you feel you about that? When you see the like the, the plastic bowls in the toilets, are you okay with that? It seem that sanitary. <laughs> <laughs> but are you okay with that? I'm okay with it. Yeah. But I love the bidet, right? The oh, bidet okay. is a lifesaver. Especially you need the spray gun. Yeah, if you're eating really spicy food and then <laughs> we're getting onto it. I don't want to talk problem. about that, but uh no, in all seriousness, the, the, the spray gun mm -hmm. is a revelation. It I mean, is. I can't live without it. No, no, no. Like, go back to the U.S., we don't have that. Maybe people think that we're stupid and they don't know what we're talking about. But if you actually come to Thailand, you'll realize how good it is. It is the most hygienic, simplest, cleanest way, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. But, yeah, let's move so on that to was, not, that next was, topic. So that was reason number 12 to live in Thailand, the spray gun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about, so many, I mean. What, what about for you? What about community? Do you make many friends? Here? Community, yeah. I'm starting to make, I mean, I've got a lot of friends online, uh -huh. but they're not real friends, right? So that face-to-face -face will never take the place of but I mean, online communities. No, I mean, what communities so yeah, here, do, you, do you get involved in? in, in some I wouldn't say that I really have a, a strong community. I mostly just hang out with Mary a lot. We're kind of best friends. So we spend a lot of time together. And does she but have many friends? No, she doesn't. And that's something I'd like to get her more, more just like work friends, pretty yeah. much. And other time friends. 
So, um, but we, you know, go like this weekend. We got, went to meet with this retired couple that's visiting. I think they're also from England. Okay. Uh, I can't remember. I think England. Yeah. yeah. And they're renting a house here, so we went over to hang out with them. So Mary had someone. Uh, his wife is Thai, so she had someone to speak Thai with and to cook with and stuff. They have a nice place with a pool. Yeah. So it's those sorts of things that. When, when I doesn't first, get lonely. When I first lived in Samui, mm -hmm. I didn't really fit in with many communities. Yeah. Right, a bit like you, I was working mm -hmm. like 10 to 12 hours a day on my laptop. That's how it is. So most of the friends that I met... I work 12 hours a week. Oh, do you? For my current employer. Okay. And I'm actually not getting salary yet. Okay. So I need to start getting commissions, sales commissions. Sure. But 12 hours a week is... Very little. Okay. That's I'm not complaining. You sure you don't get some of your bots to do that work for you? Yeah, sort of. Like they actually have to deal with some of the cold, the calling and reaching out to clients. You've got that automated. Yeah. I don't know I if you guys do know, but that. Mike is an automation wizard. I am. So if anyone needs help building an online community uh -huh. or uh, doing their social media, I've used this guy for my business before. Uh, he set and me maybe up. we can work together again sometimes. Sure. Yeah. yeah, actually, I'm interested in talking to you about that. But, cool. But what, Offline. What What Mike did for me was um, set up at like a, an automated LinkedIn outreach process. And I don't know if you remember, you 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 got me quite a good customer. Out of did that. I? Yeah. Oh well, that's encouraging. Yeah. 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 I got didn't me realize, a, got me but... a new a new paid customer. So. The work that you did for me, uh -huh. I'm going to say I got a 3x return. Oh, excellent. Okay, I was a little worried about that. Um, yeah. But yeah, and you, were you using Dripify? That's right. Yeah, you were using... Mike, Mike was using all the tools, you see. All of them. I, I, tried to, I tried to be like an entrepreneur uh -huh. that if you actually don't know how to do it yourself, then it, it kind of like makes you be more entrepreneurial in uh -huh. that I can't do that work myself because I don't know how to or do it. Or you don't want to do it, well, so just I outsource it. Yeah, but if somebody I, who knows how to do it. If I could do it myself, I probably would. But because I don't have those skills, I don't have that knowledge, it encourages me mm -hmm. to, to, to contract other people to yeah. do it. Yeah. And I think that's the entrepreneurial spirit. This is one thing I'm not good at, right? I pretty much do everything myself. Right. And obviously, I can automate a lot of things, but like even on LinkedIn, I am sending all of those messages manually. Right. I don't have like a virtual assistant okay. in the Philippines somewhere to do that for me. It's all me. Yeah. So it's quite tedious. Sure. Um, but that's just what I'm doing for now. Yeah. 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 For me, I um, I think I am a good delegator. Yeah, that's that's important. Right? So I have my I have my Thai team in Chiang Mai that do all the graphic design mm -hmm. and now account management of the of my clients. Um, and yeah, in terms of digital marketing, use people like you. I've also contracted a few other people along the way to do that work for me. Maybe this is something we can talk about for panel next too, because right now they're just making the proposals by hand every time. Right. And it's not very pleasing. It would be better if there's better graphic design behind it. You know that's so my thing. Yeah, that's you. Yeah. So my, my thing is very much, if you have a presentation, a proposal, a pitch deck, and you are about to present it to a client, that's, my, you come in. that's my that's my area of expertise. It's your bread and butter. I want I want to improve the the design, the typography, the image selection, yeah. and the branding behind the document mm -hmm. that will make you more confident to pitch it and present it. Yeah. But also that will increase your conversion rate. Mm -hmm. So you'll get more sales to talk to you about from that. a professionally designed pitch deck cool. than you would do an amateur one. And that's very much my. It's not role. just a PDF. Where it's a boring presentation. It depends how it looks, how it's branded, uh, how the messaging comes across the images. Mm -hmm. That that's that's what I I actually would do that work myself. That's 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 work what that, you excel at. But pun it, intended. <laughs> it's work that I thoroughly enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I take a I take a lot of pride from that. But more than that, I get a lot out of it. So. I mean, just use you as an example, but there's, I have many, many clients like you. Yeah, yeah. You're like, well, I have a pitch. It's worth a lot of money to me. I really want to land this deal. Like, it would give me a great deal of satisfaction to help you land that deal. Uh -huh. So that's why I enjoy that work. I enjoy yeah. giving my expertise and helping people. And you've helped clients all over the world, right? I mean, 
some Fortune 500 companies included. Yeah, yeah. For for the UK, it's FTSE. Um, so I have I have more UK clients than than American, but okay. uh, have recently Maybe moved by, in by moved. design. Well, actually, it's because of the time zones. Mm -hmm. uh, we, ah. we can work with the US in Thailand, but it's between 11 and 13 hours difference, mm. right? Yeah, that can make things difficult. It's hard. Yeah. It means that you either have to take a call at 7 a.m. or 9 p.m. They're kind of like the parameters. Believe me, I know how it goes. If I have calls in the US, I gotta be at, at night or in the morning. Yeah, whereas yeah, the UK being not seven hours, it's just perfect. Mm -hmm. So you take That's your sweet spot. It is. You take a call at like four o'clock in the three or four o'clock in the afternoon, and just have this like <laughs> two hour crossover. Uh -huh. So that's why I think that works better. For the US, if you were based in Europe, mm -hmm. you would still have that sort of time zone. Like, so say Portugal, for example. Portugal, well, really you, yeah. Years. Have you been to Lisbon? I've never been, but it's on my list. Sure. Uh, I know it's popping up on all the digital nomads. It's, list. I'm going to say top of the list yeah. on the digital nomads. Now it's actually Bangkok on nomad list. Really? Number one for many weeks in a row now. Okay. But it was Lisbon for the longest time. Yeah. Um, I guess people are coming around to, to Bangkok now. Sure. But Portugal looks amazing. Yeah, yeah Portugal was, a, was a, a top digital nomad location. Just again for all the all the same reasons, right? Mm -hmm. The quality of living, the facilities, the sunshine. There's a guy here. His name's Gun Hollow, and he started the first digital nomad village in oh. the Madeira Islands, which is off the coast of Portugal. Wow. And now he's starting one in Brazil. Okay. So he's kind of just starting these villages all over. The Smart, digital nomad guy. village. That's kind of like what Chiang Mai is anyway. <laughs> or or Nimmin Heyman, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Hipsters everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so any but yeah. any more reasons why why we think Samui or Thailand is the is the best place to live? Uh, there's a friend well, number one I would say is incredibly friendly people. Yeah. Just yeah. everywhere you go, people are smiling, they're that very very kind, good with hospitality. Sure. Just yeah. So that's and then also the the food. We didn't even food talk about is that. delicious. Can you believe it? We haven't even mentioned Thai food. That so, should be first on the list. So or I, I, have, I have many friends that that tell me Mexican food is is better. But uh -huh. genuinely, what what Thai food has is in just one mouthful, it has salty, sweet. Yeah sour it has spicy it has you know the fragrance full of flavor every single mouthful just has all of that mm -hmm. First and i flavor, think that's yeah. why thai food's on being. and there's also a lot more variety like in mexico you just have tacos which is flour tortilla sure. meat potatoes vegetables that's it pretty much every dish they have is the same ingredients yeah but here you've got a lot of variety. Sure. Song Tom, well, Dr. Powell. Let me ask you, how Thai do you go with your food? How not much? super Thai, like not, not eating bugs. You're not? Never gonna eat bugs. Okay, would you eat offal? So by that I mean like the insides of a, of a pig or a cow. Like they I've probably up. accidentally eaten them before. Probably. Like, or like intestine yeah. sausage. Yeah, you know like the intestine mad. rings. You're like, oh, it tastes like squid. It's like, no, that's not squid. Mm, no, no. And they also have like chicken butt here, which I don't eat. Okay, chicken claws. I know chicken feet. Chicken feet. Yeah. I don't eat that. Mary sometimes eat those. Is that fish eyes? No, no, no. no. Yeah, you're that's not trying to try the line. I don't eat any of that stuff. Okay. So I'm more parang than Thai. Yeah, me too. But you know what they say, you are what you eat. Okay. So I'm eating a lot of Thai food. Okay. Uh, fresh Even fruit. if it's How not fish eyes or... Thai fruits. A Thai fruit, yeah. Mangoes. Oh, of course. Of sure. course. Yeah. The mango smoothies are delicious. Yeah. Straight from the farm. Yeah. Bananas, mangoes. Uh, I like coconut smoothies. Oh, coconut. Like, there's a good place in the Mai. You can get a coconut smoothie for 30 baht. So if you're in the mine, probably won't have time, but maybe next time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. Good. So I wonder if, if anyone has any questions for us or I'm trying to read through the comments, it's, but it's very small. Let's yeah, see. Sure. Um we got some we got Kenny there, Kenny Badger. Kenny was a while ago, he just says howdy. Howdy Kenny. Why you not have Thai yeah. friends? <laughs> what, does it say Thai? Yeah. Handsome boys. Thanks, oh, Kenny. Kenny must be a guy. Yeah, why don't you have uh, 
Why do you not have Thai friends? Good question. Probably because I don't really speak the language. So there's that language barrier there. Sure. Uh, so I don't, I need more Thai friends though, really. Yeah. To properly assimilate. Yeah. Or whatever. I mean, if, if, if I'm, if I'm going to be totally honest with you guys, um, I've always chosen to live in quite international touristy areas. This is something we were talking about offline. Yeah, the... that's just my personal choice and I'm willing to pay a bit more with my cost of my coffee, cost mm -hmm. of my accommodation to have, not, not, not necessarily British because obviously I'm English and I prefer not to be surrounded by English I don't people. like being around other Americans all okay. much either, so, so you're the same. Yeah, yeah, but I do want like a, a truly international uh -huh. uh, community. Shanghai and is perfect for that. It's the best for that. Uh -huh. uh, also, my kids go to quite an amazing international school. So all of my friends now are from that school. Uh -huh. their, their parents who've got kids at the same age and we all get together, you know, like your kids kind of force you together. Yeah. I used to I used to say to someone it's like, be careful which school you choose. Like don't just think about your children, think about yourself mm -hmm. because you're gonna be at that school gate and you're gonna need to socialize with all the other parents that take their kids to that school. Your kids are gonna make best friends with people and yeah. you're gonna be forced into having friendships with their parents. So choose mm -hmm. your school based on the fact that actually you'd want to make friends with parents that took their kids there. Oh, okay, yeah, and that makes sense. In Chiang Mai, so you can make friends with the parents, if, you know. Well, Hawaii. you you will be forced to make forced to make friends to, to make friends with your children's friends' parents. Uh -huh. So so choose accordingly. And uh, we in Chiang Mai, we we uh, we go to a school called Panya Den. Which is There's a, one here called Panya D. Yeah. Is it the same? Or no. Different. Completely different. Okay. Um, I heard Panya D is a great school in Samui. And Winfield, and then my girlfriend teaches at Lamai Nursery. Okay. So she's taking care of little kids like one to four. Wow. And she's like you're saying, she's got to make friends with the parents. Right. So and she. Then, yeah, she will have a lot of. Oh yeah. She will be part of the community. And sometimes she does nanny. She's a nanny. If the if the parent needs a babysitter, she can go over there, get a little extra payment, and sure. She loves it though. Yeah. Sounds I like wouldn't last more than two days. Major, she might be the major breadwinner. I think so. Yeah, you should definitely propose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I should. But uh, yeah, one thing at a time. Sure. So step you by go. step. Why don't you have any Thai friends? The answer is. He's working on it. My girlfriend is my best friend. Yeah, she's Thai. She's Thai. So your best mate is so, Thai. She's Thai, yeah. Awesome. And she can introduce me to other Thai people and speak the language with them. Yeah. That's one thing I should also do is actually learn Thai. At least the the basics. Rudimentary vocab. Sure. Do you which I haven't can, done. can do you think that you can get through life in Samuri without speaking yeah. Thai? Oh yeah, definitely. I've been doing it for two years. Right. Um, but then, because of course, like you say, like having a Thai wife or girlfriend who can speak the language, that helps tremendously. Does that make you more lazy? It with does. The, with the language? Yeah. Sure. I've found that as And well. I speak English with her all the time because yeah. her English is already really exactly. good. Exactly. Same for me. So I'm yeah. just lazy, but best to go to like a Thai language school. I've tried. Light you? a fire under my butt. Have you? No. You've never been? I still haven't tried. Sure. For me, I mean, I'm, I need to, though. I'm 48 years old now. Mm -hmm. The idea of going back to school is not. I mean, I didn't enjoy it when I was. No, there. no, I hate it. So as well. sitting on that desk uh, with a notebook no, trying thank to you. study again—it just oh. didn't work for me. And it's such a difficult language to learn too. Yeah, it it's, depends on how your ears are. Can you hear the tone? Forty-six vowels. Forty-six vowels, and the late letters look like an alien language. I, <laughs> I can barely learn Spanish. Right. And that, no, <laughs> and I traveled there for a year and a half. Did you? Barely picked up the language. So, so there you go. Two uh, two philistines telling you that you can survive living a beautiful life in Thailand. Yeah, actually yeah, just yeah. speaking English. Now, I really recommend it. All you need to do is get your plane ticket, get your passport if you don't have one already. If you're in the U.S., for example, maybe you don't have a passport, like my parents, and then just get your ass over here. 
And the other thing that I've said um, on other interviews that I've done for like remote lifestyle is lean on people like me and Mike. Mm -hmm. You will be amazed, right? If you send us an email and say, or, or send us a, a direct message and say, oh, I saw your interview. Um, just Feel one, free to reach out. Yeah, just one question. Or could you advise me? Or could you give me some tips? Or, you know, how do I get started doing this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I find that most of the people here would actually quite happily tell you how to get started and quite happily, you know. And there's a really a good channel on YouTube. He goes by Brett Dev. Ah. He's on Chiang Mai. I've never met the guy, but I'm a, I think you've done an interview with him, right? I did an interview with him. Um, quite some time ago but uh -huh. I follow Brett he every time he get every time he launches a video he gets like minimum of 20,000 views he's doing very well right I think he's got 60,000 plus subscribers okay. now yeah what, so what whatever he's the, doing is working we're giving Brett a big plug out here what do you think the best thing about Brett Dev's channel is uh, he's honest and straight to the point I would say definitely and he's, there's no bullshit right cut to the chase you know don't don't beat around the bush yeah. just get straight into it I think I think he's a Irish? No, he's English. Oh, English. He's English. He told Bald me... Bald-headed guy. He told me that I think that 90% of the people that follow his channel are men who just have this it absolute makes sense. ideal about uh -huh. one day living in Thailand. You know what? We didn't even mention the girls. Well, well the or girls, the boys, of course. Uh, on... And lady boys. They have lady boys here if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, lots of girly... They got girly bars you can have a drink and then not getting into too much detail but you can also bring the girl home with you if you want um, but yeah so uh, what, what is it called the tour type of tourism here oh sex pack sex packs so sex there's packs. a lot of sex pads here um, but yeah we don't need to get into to too much detail about that Unless you want to, no, not, not yet. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> but no, I think, I think but that's a big draw for men that are single coming over here. Of it course. is. It is. So let me let me flip that on the side. Do you know any Western women mm. in relationships with Thai men? Not too many. No. No. It's why a, is that? It's definitely fewer. Definitely but, fewer. But when I see, I think the Thai men sleep around a lot compared to maybe the women not so much. But I don't, I'm not sure why it is. I'm not sure about that. I think I remember seeing a study saying that uh, Thai people generally were not particularly monogamous or loyal. Yeah, I've heard the same too. And rather than us trying to judge that, mm -hmm. I'm just going to say that's just a reflection on things just being quite easy, quite laid back and, and like just quite flexible and, yeah. and less serious, right? Where I'm from in Austin, there's uh, Austin, Texas, where I lived for many years. There's a big community of like, it's called poly, mm. poly amorous sure. relationships and stuff. Is and that big in, that's big in Austin? Big in Austin in particular, because there's a lot of hippies there, right? It's hippie, it's not, it's, it's not, hippie. It's not religious. No, it's not religious. It's like a hippie thing where you can just sleep around with as many people as you want. And I don't, never really saw the appeal of it personally. It's not really my thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think there's a certain amount of that here too. And then there's also, uh, I would say Thailand is much more accepting of transgenderism. Transgenders. 100%. Yeah. Well, Way it's, just, more. it's just been here mm -hmm. longer. So here we go. It's not, That's it's not nice. Just, it's not just the transgender. Uh -huh. People, Thai people generally are less confrontational. Yeah, and therefore yeah. come across as being less judgmental. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and it kind of goes into the whole karma thing too, I think, and saving face. Hey, you hit a big one. Karma should be on the top ten list. Karma of way should be way up there. Yeah, treat others as you want to be treated. Right? That's a big, yeah. big thing in Thailand, right? Oh, I've got another massive one. Massive one. We can. How long is it? <laughs> Over <laughs> an hour now. Limit? Do we have a limit? No <laughs> limit. No okay. limit. So, Off how many top. times? Lighting is a little weird. In the last two years that you've lived in Thailand, how many times have you been threatened or, or felt threatened by aggression? Zero times. I, I can't think of a single time. Maybe once or twice. If it was but 2 a.m. in the mind. morning yeah. and you were walking back home and there was a group of 18-year-old Thais hanging out on the street, would you feel threatened? 
No. no. And I'm not worried someone's going to pull a gun out and shoot me while I'm walking down the street. Yeah. Not like if I was in Los Angeles somewhere. Do some you... dangerous neighborhood in the U.S. Okay, don't, don't give out your address, but do you lock your doors and windows when you go out? <laughs> some people may already know where I live on the island here, but um, no, typically not. Even Unless if... I'm gone for an extended period of time, like sure. four or five, the all day, or we go over to Copangan or something, then I would lock my door. Yeah. But so, never had a break in. So where 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 I live in in, in Chiang Mai, uh -huh. I shouldn't give my address either. But we um we don't lock no. our house up. You don't I, have to. I don't have a house key. And you don't even have a house. I don't. Key. I don't have a house key. <laughs> because it's just. I actually lock. have a house key, but I don't use it very often. Because if you wanted to break into our house, we have mosquito screeners. I mean, you could possibly just break through you're not your worried about like your hard drives or your laptop anything valuable being stolen well i live in a gated community i live in a oh, Mayban, so okay. there is some security sure we have a mayban which means there's a housemaid in the house oh nice um, that's cool that's i call a marriage saver mm. so having a mayban would cost you it's probably a pretty big house you don't want your wife to be cleaning the house all the time. she would spend all her time cooking cleaning washing ironing and then like have no time for the family so that's we, not good we pay and this this is quite normal in in thailand we pay ten thousand baht a month that's not good. for a mayban mm -hmm. which is a housemaid mm -hmm. to do all of that work for us and you know what's that three hundred dollars yeah three roughly three hundred a little three, bit less three three hundred dollars a month yeah. and i tell you it is a marriage saver game changer right? <laughs> yes <laughs> It's Luckily, like, our house isn't too big. It's very small, right? So all we have to do is sweep. My okay. girlfriend sweeps, yeah. or I sometimes sweep, but it's not like a pal palatial place. Sure. Yeah. Obviously, for 9,000 baht a month, what do you expect? Um, but yeah, like if, if you think about the quality of life and like hiring a maid here, and you compare that to the U.S., you'd have to be living in the Hollywood Hills somewhere. I agree. To have a to rationalize sure. having a maid and then it's going to be super expensive yeah but for me just for the maid service for me because i'm because i'm english <laughs> does it make I, sense i i always relate it to living in london so when i mm -hmm. lived in london i had to be incredibly careful with my money uh -huh. i just didn't have money to spend i would use buses you know and pay one pound for a bus journey mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um that's how you know i couldn't afford a taxi or take the subway uh, yeah or walk Mm -hmm. or, or use my bike just just to just to kind of keep on on budget with the amount that i earn and i always used to kind of think about again going back to russians but like russian billionaires in london they live in kensington they live in mayfair they have the best apartments they have the best lifestyle they drive they their lamborghinis house somewhere but when i came to thailand that's how i felt I felt like I was a Russian billionaire living in yeah, London. Yeah, you're like, living like a king over well, here. I could afford to do anything that I wanted, you know. Um, That's the dream that a lot of people have that are looking to come here, right? Uh, my video, my interview with Retired Working For You, I was basically comparing the cost of living in Koh Samui, Paradise Island, to Austin, Texas, which is like a concrete jungle. It's actually one of the fastest growing cities in the whole country, for better or worse, yeah. which is driving up the rental prices Massively, rapidly. Yeah. Um, and the quality of life is bad. Uh, you got homeless people, at least when I was there, just all over the street, camping out. Oh. Uh, Mate, you, you and keep, it's like you, five times cheaper here. You keep hitting the things, right? How many homeless yes. people are there in I see almost not, like very rarely, Earlier today, I saw a drunk guy who was stumbling around in Lamai and he laid down on the sidewalk. Sure. And that was, that's, but he's not homeless. Um, what, why do you think people that's it. aren't homeless in Thailand? Very good question. Well, one reason is because the family is more important, right? So if they're down and out and they're having problems, they can just go back and live with their family. Yes. And they'll open them with welcome arms, right? Sure. Another in one the is, U.S., that's just seen as you're kind of a loser if you're living with your family, right, in the basement. Or yeah. Something, you know? Yeah. The other um, one that I think is uh, there's a lot more respect for elders mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Asia than there is sure. in the Western world. That so, could be a contributing factor. Yeah, older people are considered wiser. They're given more respect, mm -hmm. and therefore they're looked after better. 
True. But there is true, no, true. there's no... In the U.S., we just put our parents in a retirement home so when they get old. It's like, oh, just go here until you die, basically. Yeah, I mean... If and that's depressing. Back. Yeah. That's no way to live your elder years. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I think it's just easier to live mm -hmm. here, right? So oh, you yeah. would only need a, a, a corrugated iron shack to live mm -hmm. you see those sometimes like the own low income housing here yeah. you can find for two thousand three thousand baht a month oh less less okay. 500 less. baht a month if you're thai and you got the connections um so, if so hit, yeah if we hit 20 reasons why i say more than 20 at this point yeah. i hope so and that just scratches the surface yeah so where can we find more information about you on sure. social media and so I online? Am, I am um, I'm on Facebook and I'm on LinkedIn every day. If you search for Ash Pemberton, that's my uh, that's my tag. I try to I try to change my name. So my, my 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 birth name is Ashley, but I've been doing quite a bit of business in America, and in America Ashley is female name. <laughs> very much a girl's name. Yeah. If you Google Ashley Pemberton, you get blonde, 20-year-old American <laughs> girls. Uh, so I shorten my, shorten my URL, shorten my like distinct tag down to Ash Pemberton. So on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Ash Pemberton, Facebook, Ash Pemberton. Great, and then uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I'm on every single day. LinkedIn is, has become like my social media. That same here. I use it a lot. I can guess why because of the communities and, and just pro it's a professional network it is it's good for business right? yeah 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 and do, you, do, you get, do you get much work through linkedin not really not as much as i would expect at this point but um yeah working on it yeah for, and, for, for my business um if i don't get a referral from people i know uh -huh. the other income stream or new business stream is linkedin for me mm -hmm. so you that's gotta be on LinkedIn. that's why i prioritize it and then you got to start maybe automating some of those things again thanks hey. we can talk about yeah. <laughs> and then website He's pitching me yeah with pitching, pitching during the, the live guy. interview so website my website is uh for my business it's overnight dot design that's the uh the concept of my design agency in thailand is that we deliver an overnight <laughs> service and i managed to get the url overnight dot design perfect cool good for seo thanks awesome. so much for watching everyone and uh please follow subscribe like yeah wherever you're watching this reach out like if you know people in thailand if you want to come out and uh try a new life in thailand reach out to the people that are here you're going to be amazed we are incredibly professional and we are really supportive and want to help people make that move absolutely and i have my own remote consulting business where i teach people the how to put the systems in place to essentially set up their own remote business and live and work from a beautiful place like Koh Samui or Chiang Mai mm -hmm. Yeah. or Bangkok yeah Chiang, Chiang Mai is very much my home mm -hmm. um, and it will be now because my kids go to school there we've set up my base there I have my business there I'm I'm really sold on Chiang Mai and you can always make a trip down to the islands anytime yeah. you want yeah. direct flight absolutely thanks for watching take care peace from Thailand